hey what's up guys welcome back you're watching for tech so finally first android 12.1 it's also called as android 12l is released in the form of pixel experience which is one of the best custom rom available till the date for the oneplus not 2 thanks to the lead developer sakil mondal and the team bringing us the huge update after a long time you can also check the last update pixel experience from the right side card video so today in this video i will mainly focus on the installation android 12l new features full testing of the rom for the performance touch sensitivity cpu throttling what's working and the bugs we also see the main features of pixel experience you can also use the timeline to jump directly to the specific part of the video so without further ado let's get started on the new adventure First, we will quickly do the installation process. Download the ROM zip file only. You must need the TWRP install on your phone. Once you download the file, go to the settings, security and remove all the pins and the passwords. If you are already using any custom ROM, we get the advanced power menu setting. Use that and boot your device in a TWRP. Or if you don't have that, then use the ADB command on the PC, ADB reboot recovery. Once booted to the TWRP, first tap install and select the ROM zip file and flash it. Once done, go to the wipe and format and type yes. But if you get any error in a formatting, then reboot your phone in a fastboot mode, connect it to the PC and open the CMD window. Type fastboot devices to check whether device is detected or not. Then type fastboot dash w. This will erase all the data, so keep the backup of all the data if you are coming from the different ROM other than the pixel experience. Otherwise don't do this formatting step. Now type fastboot reboot, phone will boot to the beautiful boot animation of pixel experience. So after setting up the device, now we'll go to the about phone to check what's new thing we got. As I told this is the Android 12L 12.1 version of Android, still we will see the Android version number as a 12, no changes here. Finally security patch is upgraded to 5th March 2022. Kernel version is 4.14.237, build date is 29 March 2022. Remember this is the unofficial Pixel reference build, not the official one, still we are getting the regular updates thanks to the dedicated dev community for the OnePlus Nord 2. Let's see what's new thing we get in Android 12.1 or the 12L. Actually this version of Android is specially designed for the larger screen like the tablets and the PC, but still we get some visible features like in the quick setting panel. We get the quick access to the settings of the sum tiles like the Wi-Fi, screen record and the Chromecast. We just need to tap the arrow key in the tile and new setting pops up with the detailed setting of the tile. New and very interesting feature is when we long press the home screen, we get the quick switch for the 5 different recently used wallpapers. We can switch between these wallpapers without directly going in the wallpaper and the style app. If you go to the recent panel and the recent screen apps having the links or the picture related content, we get the new icons there so we can just tap on them and copy or share that from the recent screen itself. Another feature we found under the settings, display and the lock screen, there we get the tap called as the double line clock. If we enable this and goes to the lock screen, lock screen clock will be big and centered position. But if you disable it, now the lock screen clock will be shifted to the top upper part and become a smaller one. Now we get the fingerprint animation glow when you try to unlock the screen which looks cool. Instead of this, we can see some visual changes like if you expand the volume panel, there will be some gap between the media volume call volume sliders. Instead of this, if you do the split screen or access to the notification panel or the recent panel, we we'll get some rounded UI everywhere. We can tap the weather icon or the date icon on the at a glance from the home screen to directly go in the calendar and the weather app respectively. Here I didn't show that in a video. Now we'll start some tests. First one is the performance test. In my experience, I think this is the one of the finest and the smoothest custom ROM build ever. Everything is just gliding under the fingertips. Actually ROM is at the 90Hz by default when we boot the ROM first time. But even on the 60 hertz, it's very smooth. So when I took the Geekbench test first time, I got the extraordinary results like the single core, it is 799, and for the multi core, it's 2629, similar to the Note 20 Ultra results. But after some time use, when I again tested it, I got the downgrade in the results like for the single core, it was 775, 
and for the multi core it was 2356 overall no issue here you can't feel lags or the jitter anywhere all the things are just smooth here i done new test for the not 2 in this video called as the cpu throttle test it generally used to check how much percentage of cpu is getting throttled if you do the cpu intensive task and it also shows the cpu temperature at the time of cpu throttling So here I run the test for the 10 minutes and surprisingly ROM didn't go in any red line zone in the whole the time. Here in the graph you can't see any red line, but CPU throttling happens to the 86% of max CPU performance and the temperature was risen to the 50 degrees Celsius. So this is the negative point of MediaTek processors who are not able to manage the cooling and temperature of CPU even after the throttling. Let's do the sensor test. So here, all the sensors like the accelerometer, proximity, magnetometer, compass, and the gyroscope working, but light and the barometer got failed. As our device don't have the barometer, but still for the light sensor, it's shown device didn't have this sensor. That may be the reason the adaptive brightness is not working correctly in the ROM. If you took the touch sensitivity test using the app from the Play Store, I got the good result in this test. We have to slide our finger on the screen. If you guess the continuous dots without much gaps, then the screen has the good touch sensitivity rate. But if there is a maximum gap between these dots, then it has a low touch sensitivity. Here I got the maximum good line, so the ROM has a good touch sensitivity. If you do the safety net check using the Asnac application, it's got successfully passed. Means you can use any security related app in this ROM. Widevine security test is also got passed. We got the L1 security, so you can play the Netflix, Disney, or Star-like application at HD resolution. Unlimited photo backup in the Google app is tested and working. Here I didn't show that in a video. Now we'll check some major things in the ROM are working or not as ROM is completely rebased on the new Android 12L base so we'll test the whole the basic things Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi hotspots are working good OLTE incoming and the outgoing calls are working with the stable OLTE networks they also added the call recording in a dialer but we need to enable the automatic call recording inside the phone setting so the bluetooth is connecting and supports the high definition audio also I connected my Oppo Reno M31 and it's working good. I tested the audio by playing the YouTube videos. Auto rotation is also working without issue. So the sound in a speaker is also good and loud enough. Here you can check this sample. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. GPS location is also working good. NFC is also working without any issue. Alert slider is also working in the ROM with the all the slider modes. So the both the fingerprint and face unlock is also available in the ROM and both are working without the issue. Actually I feel the face unlock is more faster as compared to the fingerprint unlock. Fingerprint is also working good and fast enough. It's registering the multiple fingerprints also. So the adaptive brightness is buggy. As we seen last time in a sensor test it doesn't detected the light sensor ROM comes with the two camera application one is the Google Go cam and the another is snap camera both are simple not the feature rich still in the ROM we didn't got the OnePlus camera port but you can use the Google camera MGC build it has a lots of the features and all are working only the slow motion seems not working camera quality is also very good I took some pictures all are based in the class very clear and has the natural look USB OTG working but we need to enable the OTG tab under the OnePlus setting before connecting the pen drive all the major pixel exclusive features are included in the rom for the full details you can check the right side card video but i will discuss only few major features here like the adaptive sound is available under the settings and the sound section Inside the gestures, we get the quick tap gestures to access the recent screenshot or any specific app. By just tapping the back of the phone, it's very nice feature and working without the issue. Color control is implemented in the ROM in the display section. Boosted profile specially gives a nice look to the display. Monet theming is not available in the ROM, but still you can use the wallpaper and style app, which has the lots of the monet theme tuning options. Instead of this, OnePlus setting is dedicated tab available in the setting, which has bunch of the features like the smart charging, gaming mode, refresh rate control, and the vibration control. All are discussed in the detail in the right side card video. 
Finally, battery is not tested, but as per some community people, this Pixel experience is giving awesome battery as compared to other ROMs and the similar to the stock Oxygen OS. So I will definitely do the gaming and the battery test separately for this ROM. So stay tuned. Till then, please like and share this video, subscribe our channel, press the bell icon for the notification of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.